Hi, my name is Christine, and I'm here to show you warranty management, install-based tracking, work orders, as well as field service requests, all within Microsoft Dynamics CRM. I'd like to show you two examples today. One is a depot repair request that comes in uh, where we issue an RMA, and the product gets returned to you for repair and then returned back out to the customer. And the second is a case that results in a field service agent needing to go on site to do the repair. So in both cases, we have dashboards built that can show you very easily the status of your either RMAs or service requests. Um, here's the RMA dashboard. So the customer calls in. I open a case. Uh, I associate the customer responsible contact. I can do any sort of notes that I want on the case. And then I can select the installed product. This shows all of the serialized numbers that have been issued to this customer from the product. If you're integrated with an ERP system, this can be brought over, or you can maintain it wholly within CRM. I'm going to select my product, which then will show me that it either is or isn't under warranty. And if I need to see the warranty details, I could have it here with one click. This is a depot repair. I figured out on the phone that they can return it to us, and we will repair it here and then ship it back to them. I can determine which facility that they're going to send it back to. And then if I want to issue a replacement order in advance of the item being returned, I can do so here. And that would get integrated with your ERP system and fulfilled through your normal sales order processing. Most importantly, would create an RMA traveler. And this is where we record all the items that happen to the product as it's returned. So from the case being started to when it's returned to the customer, here's where we track everything. Two things happen when you create an RMA. First, a customer notification goes out that says, here's where you need to send it. You need to send it to San Ramon, and here's how you should send it. Uh, and then the second is we create a work order that uh, you can track items to if you need to. Some people choose to use work orders. Some people choose just to track it on the RMA. You can see that RMA has all these stages. As you fill in dates, your stages would be, be updated. If I had already sent a replacement, I can say that in here. So at this point, I have received the customer request. I have issued them an RMA and sent them instructions. And now we're waiting for return to the depot. Once the item is on our dock, we can easily reference the RMA from either our dashboard or from an RMA list. Then the person receiving it can say, OK, I received it in today. And that would trigger a workflow that would then notify personnel that this is now ready for working and or the customer service agent just to notice that the, the case is now received at the depot. Once they've worked it at the depot, they can do a couple of things. They can update the RMA items to say, you know, here's the repair that I performed. They can issue repair reports off of the case, or they can just update here in the comments that, you know, I shipped it, here's what I replaced out, here's what I fixed, and I'm shipping it back to the customers. Once they put a ship date in here, the RMA stage will be closed, and this will be uh, updated to shipped back to customer, or returned to customer. At this point, the customer service agent is notified that it's shipped, and they know to follow up within seven days to make sure that they receive the item and that the item is uh, repaired to their satisfaction. Uh, we can do that with workflows, with associating activity, or just having notifications in their dashboard. And that is the RMA case with the depot repair. Now I'd like to show you the service request. So I'm going to switch over here to the service dashboard. We have a service dashboard that can show you how your service is scheduled by depot, all your outstanding service activities, and then you know see what activities you have scheduled. So you can easily manage all your field service uh, personnel. Again, this would be originated with a customer calling in, having a problem with their uh, item. We would select the, the customer account and the responsible contact description. We can associate an install product if there is one. And when we do that, the information, again, is updated. So I'm going to do that here. We can see that the warranty information is updated. And if I wanted to, I could look at that particular warranty to see if they have on-site coverage. So for some reason, I can't resolve it on the phone, or the item's too big to return, or perhaps they have 24-hour on-site service. I can see that very easily here, so I know to wrap field service. Once I select the field service, I get three sections in here. The first is the serviceable items, so this product that they've selected. In addition, we can break it down into you know, the serviceable items from 
I'll be integrated with it, uh, from an ERP system if you have it, or you can maintain it here. Once I've determined you know, what products, I could then actually schedule on-site service. So this is all using the out-of-the-box CRM service scheduling module. I select my customer. I can select the repair that I want. You can set up as many repair services as you need. And what this allows you to do is set the duration as well as what items or resources that have to be available for you to perform this service for the customer. This wizard over here, the form assistant, will also take into your customer preferences if you set any on the account. So I've selected the repair service. I can see that I need two from the certified technicians, and I need a truck that they can take from the depot out to the customer site. Once I've selected my resources, I can then schedule the service. And what this is doing is it's taking into account all three of these schedules and finding the first available times that we need. Again, if the customer had preferences of, you know, I only take afternoon appointments, this would take it into account. I can then see, while I'm on the phone with the customer, that I have these times available, offer those to the customer, select the time, and schedule it, even close, and now the customer has field service scheduled. At this point, everything's been flowed out to their Outlook calendars, and we would just wait for the service to be held, so it would be in service scheduled. Once the field service technician goes out on site, they can either use their dashboard to see all of their, you know, their service activities and find the associated case, or they can just use their case view to find the case. Go out on site, they can uh, start to track the activities that they did. They would fill in this field service report. So here's when I was on site, here's who I talked to, here's what I did. I spent eight hours or 10 hours on site, and here's the expenses that I incurred getting there, coming back, or I had to go buy items to complete this repair. Once this has uh, the customer service is then uh, notified that it has been resolved, and they will get a notification to say, you know, this, this has been resolved. You need to follow up with the customer and make sure it's been resolved to their satisfaction. At that point, they can call the customer, and if the customer is happy, they can resolve the case, or they can create follow-up appointments or take whatever action is needed. And that is how easy service scheduling and depot management is within Microsoft Dynamics CRM.